Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Top 5 New Comics for August 14th of 2024. I'm, as always, Chris, and uh, I'm really, really excited for this week's uh, slate of comics. A lot of new number ones, a lot of returning, or actually, well, one returning franchise, and uh, just so much good stuff. So let's jump right into it, starting with Ultimates, number three. This is written by... Dennis Camp, art by Juan Frigeri, colors by Federico Bli, letters by Travis Lanhun, and edited by Will Moss. Um, the Ultimate Universe, I've gone on and on, on how much I love the Ultimate Universe, how much this new Ultimate Universe has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed the return of it, just having a different parallel universe to jump into and explore new stories about these classic characters with all this fun stuff. And the ultimate has been a really good book that has brought back the, obviously the titular ultimate team in a new and fun, interesting way with Dennis camp really leading the charge with a great story. And in this issue, we are going to get the ultimate she Hulk. That is right. She Hulk is entering the fray. Uh, not a character I'm very fond of, to be honest, but, I always did like in this in the ultimate universe when we introduced these characters, it gave a new life to characters that I may not be a big fan of, but would interpret them in different ways and, and maybe make them more interesting, maybe make them less interesting. You never know. But it was like kind of a fresh start to some of them. So I'm interested to see what She Hulk we get, how She Hulk is interpreted in this universe, and, and what that means for the overall story of the Ultimates team trying to figure things out, how they're going to take on the maker here in two years and all this other fun stuff that's going on. There's just a lot of good happening inside the Ultimate Universe, and this book in particular has been really, really good. So just overall, just a really good book. Um, yeah, I highly recommend any Ultimate book. I think they're all, most are really good, and uh, it's really... <laughs> I don't know what much more to say other than that the Ultimate Universe is great. The Ultimate book in particular is really good. And I'm just interested to see how far they take this series and what new twists and turns we get along the way. After that, I've got Ultraman Cross Avengers number one. This is written by Kyle Higgins and Matt Grum with art by Francisco Mana. So... If you've seen anything with me over the past, I don't know, 10 years, I've been doing comics-related stuff. You know I love a good crossover. I love them to death. And I, I've i really been harping on Marvel over the past couple of years to do more crossover stuff. And especially since they own so many great IPs now through the Disney acquisitions, and that's a whole nother conversation but the end game of that is they own all these ips so we can do all these cool crossovers in-house we don't have to cross with our companies and worry about blah 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 so they need to do more because i thought dc for a long time was just the kings of doing this type of thing with you know planet of the apes versus the green lanterns and star trek versus the green lanterns and all these other cool books and ultraman is one of those series that marvel got their hands on they've been doing a bunch of ultraman comics and Kyle Higgins has been writing them and although I'm not the biggest Ultraman fan I, I do enjoy him when he shows up I enjoy certain things I've seen him in just the idea of Ultraman teaming up with the Avengers seems like a blast and I'm really really excited to see where this goes how this goes uh and the fact that there's also I think it's Viz Media is doing a manga series that's similar but it's Ultraman and Spider-Man in the manga form I'll be interested to see that once it's all collected, because that's how I read manga. And that's coming out the same date on the Viz Media app, I believe. And just this synergistic crossover from both sides is a lot of fun. I'm really interested in seeing more. After that, I've got DC versus Vampires World War V number one. This is written by Matthew Rosenberg with art by Otto Schmidt. Colors by... <laughs> Pierluigi Casolino, letters by Tom Napolitona. 
and edited by Marie Javins. A lot of tough names there. I apologize if I butchered any. Uh, DC versus Vampires, one of those books that I love. Uh, that first series was so much fun. Another one of those things, if you've watched me over the years and you've gotten to know me, you know I love a good vampire book. And when they announced DC versus Vampires, I was very, very interested to see what this book would be and how they would pull it off. And I gotta say, they pulled it off so well. <laughs> that first series is so much fun. I loved every second of it, and I'm so glad to see it back. Uh, where it ended, how it ended, definitely led to a or made way for a sequel. And they definitely need to come back to it because there were so many answers that were not given, and it set up so many new things that could be interesting. And then this is another one of those books that's in the new DC Elseworlds, which is really exciting. I love that Elseworlds is back. So DC versus Vampires. If you haven't read the first volume, it's so good. And there's even a um, spinoff series that I'm going to forget the name of right now that was a lot of fun as well. But the main book itself was just a blast, and I cannot recommend it enough. So I'm really excited to have this book back and to see where it goes after that i've got babs number one this is written by garth ennis with art by jason burrows so anyone that knows knows me knows i am not the biggest fantasy guy but i do love me some as they say swords and sandals fantasy big cone barbarian uh cole all these kinds of barbarian-esque creatures that were created in the, the 70s and 80s and made their way to comics. And to see somebody like Garth Ennis doing a book in that realm interests me very much. And then to see it at a publisher like Ahoy Comics adds another twist to it. So I have not read Babs of, as of yet. You will probably be seeing my uh, review of it coming up this week. Uh, as you're watching this. But being in the, the spot where I have not read it yet, I feel like this book has the potential to be this cool little humoristic twist on these uh, Swords and Sandals books, much like Barbaric does. But it's also Garth Ennis, so I know it's going to have a unique flair to it, like a kind of dark British flair to it. There's just so many things cool here that I think will turn out to be a really fun comic and overall not every publisher bats a thousand but ahoy is one of those publishers out there that they pick their projects wisely and when you see an ahoy book more often than not you have a great book in your hand so they've earned that privilege of saying and with that Ahoy Comics logo at the top, that I can say, yeah, that has the chance of being a really good title, or at the very least, a really fun title. So I just think Babs is going to be a blast, and I'm really excited to read it here soon in the next day or so. After that, we've got Johnny Quest number one. This is written by Joe Casey with art by Sebastian Perez, colors by Lorenzo. Scaramella, letters by Taylor Esposito, and edited by Matt Idelson. So, Dynamite Comics is doing the Hanna-Barbera stuff. We talk a lot about Space Ghost on this series. I absolutely love Space Ghost. I think it's a great comic. And they did a little preview inside of, I think it was issue two of Space Ghost, of Johnny Quest. And I read a little bit of it, read a few pages. I thought they had everything down really well. It seemed like a cool take on it. And I didn't read any further. I moved past and finished my reading of Space Ghost. And I just, Johnny Quest is one of those old cartoons that's shown up in comics over the years that I just really adore. And I think has a lot of cool things about it that can lead to lead to just good fun adventures. Uh, 
to see Dynamite treating Space Ghost with such care and to really kind of modernize that IP gives me hope that they will do it for the other ones. And Johnny Quest is one where I think you don't have to do a whole ton to modernize it. You can kind of keep that pulpy Indiana Jones as a kid aspect of it and really make it work. And I think now more than ever, it's something that just will fit in the culture. To see Joe Casey writing it too is awesome. Like Joe Casey is a renowned comic writer who's done so much over the years and has a good sense for humor. And I hope that's something he brings to this book because while Johnny Quest can be a fun and serious book, it's also full of humor and funny moments and um, just all these kinds of great things. So Johnny Quest is just one of those IPs that I, whenever it shows up, I give it a shot. I, I just think it's a cool IP and I really look forward to see what Dynamite has in store for it. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you want to support this channel and this video series further, uh, as you hear on every YouTube channel, like, subscribe, share, comment down below, smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. And uh, comment down below what books you're looking forward to. If there's some was on my list that you think I missed or that, or there's one on my list, you're like, how the hell is that on the list? Let me know down below. Uh, I want to hear from you. And if you want to support me further, best ways to do it are to check out the Fortress Comic News podcast. We do it every week, talking about comics, talking to comic creators, doing all kinds of fun stuff. And also my Substack, which is chriscomicscorner.substack.com, where all my comic reviews are. That's where you'll find my Babs review when I post it and uh, a bunch of other fun stuff. So thank you all once again for watching. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all enjoying everything on the Fortress Comics YouTube channel. And I'll see you all here next week.